debates have attracted a lot of attention, but will the candidates' uh, performance during the debates really translate into votes? Well, who knows? Well, more on this, we're joined by two people who do know, two media experts, Andrew Duffy from the Wee Kim Wee School of Communication and Information of the NTU in Singapore, and Jonathan A. Behard, the Regional Business Director for Marketing and Advertising Agency, a Gilvia Matha. Now, gentlemen, in many countries, uh, the personalities uh, of politicians are a huge driving force in politics. We're thinking the Philippines, the US, and uh, well, in some cities as well, like Taiwan. But what about in the UK? Um, to what extent can the charisma of a candidate sway voters? Well, I'd like to think that the, in the UK, the um, uh, electorate aren't completely swayed just by charisma and by, by, by star power. I think what's unusual this time around is there's been a bit more with the TV debate. There's been more concentration on how people look. Yeah, I'd agree with that, absolutely. We've seen the TV debates pulling in 10 million viewers. Now, just to give that some context, the most popular TV show in the UK ever was pulling in 15.5. So these are a lot of people that are watching them, and charisma is vitally important. In fact, let's face it, politicians these days are brands. And we know when we talk to our uh, brands and our clients at Ogilvy, you know, it's all about your personality, so they need to focus on that. Okay, well, uh, the Prime Minister, Gordon Brown, has the makings of a good Prime Minister, but apparently he lacks charisma. So what else can he do, uh, you think, or could have done to, to improve on this? One of the most painful moments I've seen on television was Gordon Brown cracking a joke, uh, which had been scripted um, about 45 years ago, and he pulled it out, and we knew he'd made a joke because he smiled. <laughs> and it was a smile of somebody who had learned how to smile from reading a book or possibly a little slip inside a Christmas cracker. So um, I think if he could be more like he really is, be true to himself, I hope people would respect him more for that. Yes, apart from obviously uh, making sure the microphone is, uh, <laughs> is, is well and truly off yes, and right. your true character comes out behind the scenes, mm. that's not so good. But yeah. generally I agree, Andrew, I would say, you know, he needs to be true to himself. He's got great qualities and he just needs to bring those out. We've seen it with uh, David Cameron. Mm -hmm. uh, he's come from a privileged background. But really, uh, the electorate seems to have come to terms with that, have accepted him for who he is and for his policies. So that's something I'd like to see Gordon uh, mm. Brown work on as well. But it seems like such a shame because when he tried, to put a smile on, people don't seem to accept it or embrace it. But let's look at, okay, we know that such TV appearances, media appearances, can do wonders for a candidate like Nick Clegg, but what can it do for the election itself in terms of educating um, the voters on the issues and perhaps to get to the true substance of the, uh, of the candidates? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I think it's one of the uh, few imports I can think of from the US uh, to the UK. So what we've got here is obviously more personality coming through and it's uh, politics of personality. But I think we're seeing on the chat forums and in social media and on Facebook, we're seeing a younger generation of people that would maybe be less interested commenting and talking about the issues because it really the spotlight is on the polic policies that the parties have and that can only be a good thing. Mm -hmm. And also, for the first time, there's in live television what the politicians actually think. And that's actually, it, it's strange to think that television, the old medium, has come up trumps and introducing an exciting and motivating an entirely new generation of voters. So um, I think it's, it's been a, a great uh, leap forward in that respect, yes. Okay, well, we're talking about the media. In keeping mm. with the technological era, mm. uh, most politicians nowadays depend quite a bit um, on the internet to promote themselves, mm -hmm. right? But and it, 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 it's, uh, you know, a paper poster of the Conservative and Labour parties that have attracted a surprising uh, amount of attention there, though um, perhaps not quite the sort of attention. Okay, gentlemen, that, uh, let's have a look at this report from our colleague, Chi Lin. Half a million pounds. The Daily Mail says that's how much the Conservatives paid for a nationwide campaign featuring their leader, David Cameron. But naughty netizens had a field day with his two flawless face, believed to be the result of overzealous airbrushing. His super smooth skin spawned a series of spoof posters, most notably on the independent website mydavidcameron.com. Some suggested that he belonged in a wax museum. But the claws came out over another of the Conservatives' posters. This one about Labour's supposed death tax bit the dust. Critics said it scared the elderly. What's worse, the tax wasn't actually a Labour policy, but merely an option, which Labour later rejected. Of course, that also became the subject of scorn. In contrast with the Conservatives' £18 million campaign budget, Labour had only £8 million to play with. Still, they had a hit with this billboard. 
suggesting that David Cameron on was two-faced about the National Health Service. But Labour also scored an own goal with this poster, designed by a member of the public. It likened David Cameron to a TV character from the 1980s. But most people thought Mr. Cameron came across as cool, and the Conservatives even ran their own version. After its airbrush with disaster, Gordon Brown does have a nice smile. Well, yes, he does. Well, okay, <laughs> gentlemen. It's real. It is a real, when it's a real smile. Okay, who did you think had the best uh, campaign out of the three? I think you're the man here, so please. Okay. Well, I, firstly, I have a lot of sympathy for uh, Labour with the Ashes to Ashes poster uh, that made Cameron look uh, cool because what they actually did was a very interesting tactic. They, they crowdsourced that ad and what that means is uh, they went out there and they said, we'll run a competition with the Labour faithful and you send us in some ideas uh, for a poster and it was one idea from the Labour faith faithful that they created there and they ran it. So really interesting tactic, really interesting uh, to see them using these kind of uh, ways to get a poster made but unfortunately I think they picked the wrong one there. <laughs> <laughs> but, but seeing those posters, those parodies, doesn't mm. make you feel proud to be British. When, when you yes. see, when there's a, such a wonderful, nice disrespect for the politicians. That's right, there. great British sense of humour oh, coming um, through. Yes, uh, exactly. Yes. So they right. seem to put a, a new spin on so-called interactive uh, media in that sense. Mm -hmm. Although they're using traditional medium, uh, they are getting their supporters to help them. But in general, overall, how well do you think uh, the candidates have employed the various mediums? You're talking about paper, talking about electronic, to reach out to their voters. Well, oddly enough, all, all three candidates got burned on mum's net. Um, uh, Gordon, they were all asked what was their favourite biscuit and Gordon Brown took 24 hours to reply to what his favourite biscuit was, which gave him a reputation as being a ditherer. The answer was something with chocolate on it, by the way. And David Cameron said his favourite biscuit was uh, an oat cake, and I think Nick Clegg wanted a rich tea, which is the dullest biscuit known to humankind. <laughs> but between them, on the one level, it also shows in trying to be approachable, you become trivial. And they end up actually look, making themselves look rather foolish by trying to engage at such a uh, mum's net kind of level. So there's a lot to be said, I think, for maintaining the kind of um, some distance and, and using the traditional, more more respected, more respected media. Well, apart from biscuits, it seems people seem to think that beefcakes is another way to go um, <laughs> uh, winning votes. So they're looking at um, stars, I believe. Uh, Liberal Democrats trumped their larger political rivals in the big name stakes of mm -hmm. getting stars to endorse them. Well. The uh, Liberal Democrats, as you said, uh, having stars like Harry Potter's Daniel Radcliffe and Mr. Darcy right there, Colin Firth, having given them their support. Firth is, in fact, a convert saying he'd never vote for Labour again. Terrible snub in a way, yeah, yeah. right? But celebrity endorsements, apart from the photo ops they offer, um, do they really actually put votes uh, in for the candidates? I would say that celebrity endorsements are very important, going back to the analogy of brands. What they can do is they can give you an image in the population's mind, but when it comes down to the actual moment of truth, when the pen's hovering over the box, uh, the celebrity endorsement isn't going to make you tick one way or another for a party. We have also seen with David Cameron, he appeared with Brooke Kinsella, an actress, mm -hmm. um, to try and give an image that he was more in touch with the streets. She's a very well-known actress uh, whose brother had suffered uh, terrible uh, incidents. So, you know, that was, that was something he was using to get across a different uh, image there, which was very successful as well. Well, so, according to, to some surveys, the, the younger generations are not swayed by all these uh, celebrity mm -hmm. endorsements. So what kind of endorsements do you think will actually get the attention of uh, the younger voters, Andrew? I would say, um, being again, going back to my early point, being honest about who you are, um, having good, reasonable policies, and not trying to trivialize, not trying to talk down. I think one of the things that young people deal with most is being talked down to by, um, by those who are older than them, thinking, you know, um, doing raps, thinking young people like rap, <laughs> therefore if I present my political broadcast as a rap, young people will vote for me. It doesn't vote that way and it's patronizing. So yeah. it's to be taken seriously. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, the bottom line. at the end of the day, it's substance. And uh, David Ogilvy, our founder, once said, you know, if your communication, your advertising doesn't have a big idea in it, it will pass like a ship mm -hmm. in the night. And, you know, I think that's what they need. And uh, we're seeing some examples of that in their policies. And of course, also smile very often so that when you finally have to do it for the camera, it looks real. <laughs> it looks yeah. Gentlemen, authentic. thank you so much okay. uh, for being thank here you. with us. We have uh, Andrew, Andrew Duffy. Duffy. From the uh, We Kim We uh, School of Communication and Information and Jonathan Abraham from Ogilvy and Mather joining us there. It's time for us to uh, go for a break right